Whenever you're ready, thank you. Excellent. Morning, Carlos. Morning. Um, we'll, we'll start with the injury news. Um, can you give us an update, first of all, on, on Daniel Sinani and whether he might be available this weekend, please? Yes. Uh, fortunately, the, the recovery of Sinani has been fine. He doesn't have any important injury in the muscle. So he was feeling something, but the, the, the didn't make, didn't arrive to make an injury. He's going to complete now the training. Well, he's going to do the training now uh, at 10 with the group. If the training is fine, he's going to be available tomorrow. And if he gets through training, potentially, could he start? If he completes the training, he can be a star or, or, or should play like everyone. So okay. let's see. It will be depend about the season, but if he is in the squad, it's because he can play minutes without any risk or with no, no high risk. And the other player that we're waiting for news on was Levi Colwell. What's the latest with him? The recovery of him is being fine, but he is not going to be available because at the end he couldn't train in days with the group. Uh, he will do today the first training because we know that it's a short training in preparation of the game and after he will start to work the physical condition the with the physical coaches. His fitness conditions, tomorrow he will do another training. On Sunday, the normal thing that he will recover and on Monday, uh, the doctor said that he will be normal available with the group. So he's not going to be during the weekend, but he will be available with the squad from Monday. Oh, that's good news. Um, and any other injuries? Is anybody at this stage unavailable for tomorrow's game? No, from the last week, we continue, We are going to continue without, without Holmes, for the same reason that we were saying before, without Colwell, like I told you right now. But I think all the other players are going to be available and all the other players are in a good condition to, to go and to travel and to compete tomorrow, uh, at the tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow game. Reading tomorrow then, it was the biggest win of the season so far at home against Reading. Have Huddersfield Town changed much since then? And have Reading changed much since then as well? I think at that uh, game, uh, it stood, uh, was one of the first games of the, of the season and of course have have many games more in between the between the games, uh, but it's true that we have changed a little bit. I think in the beginning of the beginning of the season we start to play with the three for three at that moment of the season, and it was one game that they finalized the number of players involved. It's true that it's similar. Only Holmes, who was player that was in the bench, is is not going to be in that game or, or Colwell. And they, I remember that in that game they have some some injuries that they couldn't they couldn't play and tomorrow I think they will be with different squad and with different players. So in the championship, the things change a lot. It's only in, in one week or in one month. So we imagine in more time. Where are they dangerous, Reading? I think one team that they have good players and they have good players with a style that they want to attack. So it's a team that for me is with them to the fact that, that they can attack. If you analyze the squad, they have players with experience. They have with many years in the championship. That is true that they are not in a good dynamic and sometimes this is another dangerous fact that the team is not in a good dynamic and when you are not getting the result that you want, you know that you need to react. But always like we always talk here, there are things that we can control, there are things that we cannot control. We are going to prepare ourselves to play against the best reading that we, have, that we can play because this is how we help ourselves to prepare our minds to compete the game. Because it's true that they can achieve that level because they have players to play in a good level. In all ways, we are going to prepare with the highest level of respect to any opponent, to against any opponent, and always with the highest level of concentration and focus in ourselves. But it's true that always, when you prepare the games, thinking in every strength that they can do in every behavior, for me, you prepare, you prepare well the game, and this is how you prevent to, to anything that uh, is not the right thing to do. So at the end, our preparation against the best level of opponents always help us to be in a good level between the confidence and, of course, in the self-demanding. You would clearly never disrespect any opponent or take anything for granted, but you have to look at Reading as a side, given their league position, given that they played midweek and lost at home to Luton. They're a side that are there to be got at. There's quite a lot of expectation on you to, to win this quite comfortably. Would you agree? I think if I would go with this type of man, would be total wrong for us. Our mind need to be need to go, knowing that we play against a championship team. We know that they are in this position, they are not in a good position at the table, but it's more related with the deduction of points because they have performed well against some of the opponents, of course. 
and we need to go with our man to be focused to get the best that we can give as a team. As soon as I will be relaxing with one result against any team in the championship, I will do a high, high uh, or a big mistake. I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about Scott High, um, who maybe had a difficult afternoon against Swansea, but equally we've seen how good he can be at times during this season. In an ideal world, where is his best position? Where do we see the best of Scott High? I always say from the beginning that uh, Scott High for me is one number eight. That was playing as a position midfielder because we understand that he was the the best at that moment, the best player to play as a position midfielder, covering one position that uh, we plan to go with Hoggy and we plan to go with Vallejo. But as soon as we lost uh, these two players, we understand that Scott High had the experience to come help the team in that position. Now, for me, from Hoggy uh, come to the team, for me, he moves the position to come play more in the natural position, Scott High, that is the position of number eight that usually that position of one dynamic number eight is covering by, by O'Brien. That is another young player, but with a little bit more experience than that Scott Hyde. I think the fact that you can see in some games some problems the players or show you some problems in another game show a good level of performance means that they, they still are players, young players, and these type of moments are going to appear always in the career of any young player. So I think that Scott High is managing very well the season uh, with uh, some games where he had a high level of contribution. I just remember now again, like for example, West Bromwich at home when I was watching an amazing game of him. Even Cardiff away, I remember that we didn't get a good result, but I remember that he was having a fantastic performance and after some performance that are not going to be in the highest level that they can do because to show consistency where you and young, you are playing a role, is going to take some time. So I think Scott High is a player that he will learn. He learn always from when the things are not working as the, uh, how he wants, because he's very self-demanding player, and this is something for me fantastic. And he will use always the moment where he's not in the team or in the first 11 to, to continue to keep improving that this is exactly the normal situation with any young player. Um, and finally, for me, on the, the transfer window, I know you tend to not give too much away with these things, but are we expecting any more transfer business, either incomings or outgoings from Huddersfield in, in the next couple of weeks? I think the market is still open, and I know that this club is enough ambitious to be watching the, the possibilities to, to improve the level of the squad. But it's true that we say from the beginning that we have one squad that covers many possibilities. And I am just full focus to work with the pay that we have. Then let's see what happens in the, in the next weeks. And, and a player that you've been linked with, a former Huddersfield Town loanee, Jamie Patterson. Again, I wouldn't expect you to name names, but is he the sort of player that might be on your radar? No, I, I don't like... I, I will... I understand your questions, but I have to only give you answers about any player as soon as any player be in Huddersfield. So when the player is in Swansea or in another clubs, of course, I, I cannot be talking by players that are not Huddersfield players. We'll keep asking. Thank you ever so much, Carlos. Good luck this weekend. Of course, I understand. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Stephen, come to you. Hi, Carlos. Morning. Good morning. Um, Pat Jones had a fantastic appearance for the beating the other day. He scored a hat trick. He's missed a lot of the season, but we know he's a, a player that you liked. He got a few games under you last year. Might he figure in your your thoughts over the second half of the season? I think it's a a high pity from my perspective to not have a, him available from the preseason because for me he's one of the players with that I understand that he has the potential to, to come help in the, in the first team. That's why the last year he was playing against Watford in the cup uh, with us and after he was involved in some of the games. And I had the idea <clears throat> in this preseason, this summer, to, to have him more involved with the first team, but the injury made him impossible to, to give that step. But now, <clears throat> fortunately, six months later, he started to come back to the, to the squad, to come back to the minutes. Now uh, we need to go, the, the medical staff need to go little by little because he was there playing just uh, 50 minutes and they tried to extend that time, but he's going to need some time to be ready to, 
just to perform in the normal condition of, of, of football. Of course, I know that uh, is one player that I'm excited because I know that he can play in the left side, he can play on the right side, he can play even as a number 10. And he's one player that everything that you can be asking in the last third of the pitch with the cross, with the assist or with the finishing, he's one player that he manages really well. Yeah, I was about to ask you what, what he brings to the side. It sounds like he's got a bit of everything then. I think so. I think he's one, he's a still young player, didn't show these skills in a high level football. But when you have the skills and he's a player with, for me, a, a good mindset because he's a player enough humble and enough self demanded, I understand that with the number, if he starts to accumulate trainings with the first team, something that he couldn't do this year yet. But as soon as he starts to accumulate training with the first team, he can be one option more that we have. And Danny Grant was back as, as well. I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood what you said about Danny Grant last week. He's, he's been training two days a week, is, is that right? And how's, how's his recovery going? Exactly. He was training uh, until he was playing that game. He, from the game that he was playing against Birmingham in the cup competition of the B team, he could only train in two times with the first team. The other number of days he was doing a recovery or was off to prevent the new injury or he was working with the medical staff and some day a small training or part training with the with the B team. So it's a player that he is no he is progressing in how he managed the the minutes that he's playing with the B team still because it's one player that we don't want to give any step back. It's important that he doesn't have another injury again and the medical advice in this case, is that manage with a lot of care and a lot of attention the minutes that he has in the training after playing any type of game. So, for example, he was playing the other day with the B team, and the normal time uh, he was playing like a half, uh, 45 minutes, and the normal time of recovery for him is going to be two days after that moment because we need to be building uh, little by little again uh, his, not, the, the, his adaptation. So, we say that despite that he has a lot of potential and he was involved with the first team in the training and very close to be some moments uh, to can help and support the squad, is a player that we don't want to give any step back and we need to manage very well the balance between the game minutes, the game training and the recovery to don't go to the injury process again. And Aaron Rowe, is, is he, he obviously he missed last week. Is... Is he all right this week? Is he back in contention for the weekend? It's the first week that he was has doing a play a training all the week. He was the other day playing with the B team too. Uh, he was playing some some minutes with the B team, sixty five minutes. So we allow us to think that he has improved from the last time. He's another player that he's going to need for me some time to achieve the level that he can achieve as a player. But the fact that he has complete. Uh, one week right now is a positive new for his improvement and for his adaptation to the to the football fitness levels. And I want to ask about Oli Turton as well. You, you picked him rather than Nabi Sar last week. Is that sort of um, how do you feel his season has gone? Is is he adapting to the championship better now? Do you think? No, uh, he's one player that he excited me a lot from the beginning of the of the season. Some players need a little bit of time to to adapt to the Champions League level, but uh, the, the, the mind of Turton is one mind that allows him to have a fast adaptation because he's a player that he doesn't know how to do the things without the high intensity that he can put in every single thing. When you are watching training, it's one player that you cannot be asking for anything else. It's impossible. He's going to give you everything that he has inside him from the first day to the last drill, from any day in the week. As soon as you are working with this profile of players, always is. Is exciting from the coach perspective, but it's not only about his attitude for me, it's about the condition that he has. He's one player that for me, the last year he was playing as a fullback, he was playing as a wingback, and he was playing as a central back, Willano three, and the last year in League One he was playing as a central back, Willano two. So it means that he is one player that even he was playing as a number eight, some games with Blackpool. So it means that he's a player that has possibilities. Uh, to different possibilities to use in the pitch. I understand that for us, Turton in line of four is a fullback. In line of five, is central back 
and this is another profile of win back, but he can play in both positions. And this is how I understand that he can play. I don't consider him to play as a central back with two central backs. I consider more him when you play line of three. But it's true that when you have him in the pit during the game without making any change, you can go to line of three or you can go to line of two without changing any type of player just to be looking for the best adaptation about what the game is, is asking. So to have players with versatility for me is important to adapt, especially from the defensive point of view. Great. That's all from me. Good luck tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, Steve. Leon, welcome to you. Uh, good morning, Carlos. Good morning. Oh, I hope, hope you're well. Yes, your, your side's away from against sides at the bottom of the table is a little bit disappointing. I'm thinking, you know, Peterborough, Barnsley, Cardiff. So that's a good motivation for you to get it right on Saturday. I didn't know this. You told me this and you, <laughs> you claim me. Yes, this motivation. Exactly. Yeah. The motivation. But we have the motivation anyway. Three points yeah. are key for us. Any type of opponent, any type of uh, moment to play at home or to play away, for us is just the motivation. What we need to do, like you say, that sometimes mm, the some expectation about some results are total negative yeah. and are total wrong. That's why our focus and highest level of concentration is to get from ourselves the best performance that we can achieve. The better performance, the better we perform in one game, the more options we are going to have to com we are going to have to compete again. And yeah. to go for the result that we want. So the best we prepare the game, the best we demand ourselves, the more option we are going to have to be a competitive team. So this is really what we need to, yeah. what we need to do. I mean, this is a game where, you know, if you sustain your intensity over 90 minutes, you'll have a good chance. Reading have, have struggled in the second half. They've conceded 33 goals in matches this season. Yes, it's true that keep the level of intensity is important. Start well the game is important too because you cannot put everything in 45 minutes. I think it's always important to go from the first minute to the last minute with with this level that we were saying before. So after we'll see what happens with, with with the game, but uh, everything has to be every minute for yeah. for us is going to be important minute. Every challenge has to be important challenge, and when you play with this mentality. Uh, this is for me the key. One time I read one coach that he said that the first 90 minutes of one game are the most important minutes. And I agree with this coach. Yeah. The first 90 yeah. minutes of one game is the most important minutes plus after the, the extra time. So yeah. <clears throat> the key for us is to, to have a, a start the game with, a right, with the right mentality, a start the game with, the, with an offset demanding to show what we can do in attack and we show what we can be in defense. And don't stop to show this mentality in any minute of the game. This is the, the perfect game that we always, every coach in the world, try to work for this. And we have the mentality to try to achieve this type of performance or this type of level. Yeah. And I'm just finally, I was going to ask your team, are eight, eight or nine matches unbeaten. That's something to protect and, and cherish, isn't it? To try and carry that on into something, something longer. Yeah, to have a positive, long dynamic will be something fantastic. There is any doubt that this is exactly what we want. And to can make uh, something positive that like we are saying, we need to just be focused in the next game, knowing that the past is not important and the only important thing, and the most important thing that we are going to have are the 90 minutes that or more than 90 minutes that we have that we are going to play against reading. So the most important thing for me is to get the intensity and the level that we need to, to achieve to be a very competitive team. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you so much. David Anderson, two weeks in a row, we're honoured. <laughs> hey, I'll maybe go for the hat trick when the cup game comes around as well. Good morning, Carlos. Are you okay? Yes, fine. Uh, Carlos, I'm just wondering, you're on an excellent run, the best championship campaign for Huddersfield since the one promotion in 2017. How hard is it to do this when there's like the, the, the takeover going on behind the scenes, really, and possibly new, new ownership? No, I think... Uh, for me, football has three moments or has three moments. The, the past, the present and the future. What we have done in the past have to help us to protect of the mistake that we have been doing and have to protect us uh, to, to create a good mindset to know how we need to face the games. So when you have a positive dynamic in the previous game, always we need to use to knowing how we were preparing that games, how we were playing this type of games 
and what is the right mind or the, the right preparation to, to compete. The next moment is the future. As soon as you put, you try to be focused in things that are not real, you are going to just to waste the energy. So the only moment that you can work is in the present, and the present is tomorrow, today the training, to prepare well the game, tomorrow the game, and yeah, we need to be focused in the things that we can control, that is go with the highest level and full determination to compete again. So is it a case, do you sort of almost like have a cocoon for yourself and the players and the staff so everybody's just in their own bubble and the, the, whatever happens outside the bubble doesn't affect you? In football, if you don't have this type of mind, you will be lost. Uh, in one week, you can be, uh, I don't know, everyone can be talking about the expectation in one team, everyone can be talking about something only positive, and just you go one game later and you are talking just about the, just the total opposite. So while you don't have the balance, this world for me is very emotional because the games in football is emotional because the games are, uh, have emotional consequences. So as soon as we don't have the balance in this type of emotional work, for me, we don't allow us to perform in the level that we have to perform. Our work and part of our responsibilities is just to be balanced, just focus in our strengths, to show the, our strengths, to reduce our weaknesses, and to do the same with the opponent. Try to use the weaknesses that any opponent is going to have and try to prevent from the strength that every single opponent has to. As soon as we start to think in things that are not these type of things, we are not helping ourselves. So the only important thing being true that is not just to create this type of uh, environment that protects us, it's just to help us to be more competitive team. The only way to be a competitive team, in, for me, is to have the game by game mentality. Giving to every single game that you are going to play the highest level of importance. Always thinking that you are going to play with the best version of any opponent and prepare to play one, to face one opponent that is going to be able to show the maximum level of strengths. And knowing that you have possibilities in any type of game. And then, have you had to maybe sort of, I don't know, dampen expectations a little bit, Carlos, because you know, it is going so well. You know, it, it's such a dream, isn't it, to get to the Premier League that, as you say, but no, it's just one game at a time. You can't look too far ahead and start to think about what may happen. You can only focus, as you say, on the next game. My only dream right now is to prepare the game in the best condition and to see Huddersfield Town performing the level that I want to see performing as reading. And I guarantee you that I don't have any single dream more than that one. 